What's going on you guys? This is Aaron from Departures Capital and welcome to the video. In this video, we had the pleasure of interviewing the COO of Victory Square Technologies, Vahid Shababi, on the future of the company and all the new and exciting things that they're up to. Victory Square Technologies has an awesome portfolio of companies focused on the healthcare, AI, augmented reality sector. They got a very interesting mix of businesses and in this interview we're going to be talking about some very specific topics and some specific updates. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Last but not least, if you do support me, the channel, and all the videos that I do make, and there's two things. The first thing, of course, is to explode that like button. It takes just one second of your time. Helps my video so, so very much, along with if you are a new viewer to the channel. Haven't had a chance to subscribe yet, but you appreciate videos just like this one. Of course, don't forget to cash that subscribe button and ring the mark bell for notifications. And let's get straight into this awesome interview. What's going on, guys? This is Aaron from Departures Capital. We're here with Vahid Shababi, CGO of Victory Square Technologies. How are you doing today, Vahid? Um, thanks for having me. I'm good. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful day in Vancouver, so no complaint. Yeah, the weather's not too bad here in Toronto. So, um, yeah, very good day for sure. So, let's get an update on Victory Square Technologies. I'm really excited to talk about it. So, update on the 15-minute rapid test kits for COVID-19. Can we talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. So um, uh, earlier this year, um, one of our portfolio companies, Victory Square Health, uh, which was funded in uh, about three years ago to focus on uh, digital health, uh, health tech, as well as the diagnostic testing, um, acquired the business uh, in Brazil called SafeTest. Uh, we were working and monitoring the SafeTest for past year, year and a half that they came to Canada. Uh, and uh, the SafeTest team has uh, seven or eight different diagnostic tests. One of them is around COVID. So um, they um, developed the test. Actually, they developed two tests around COVID. One was the 15 minutes rapid test, and the other one was a three hours ELISA test, which is the lab test. Um, so um, basically, because of the pandemic, we had to do a few things at the same time, and we couldn't just have a you know kind of like a process based on uh, stages and steps. Uh, we were focusing on uh, four main things from from the Victory Square Health perspective, uh, approvals in different jurisdictions to have a good relationship with the government and get uh, the government and jurisdictions approvals, um, having working on our manufacturer capacities because of the pandemic that is happening, we knew uh, we're going to deal with this, um, uh, lining up the distribution channels and sales in, in different jurisdictions, again, depending on the approvals, and lastly, working on a full service tech, uh, you know, health, uh, 360 uh, health services that, that we're working on that. So that was the main four um, uh, stages or four different uh, projects that we're working on the Victory Square Health. From the approval perspective, uh, in last, uh, you know, few months, uh, we received the FDA permission for sales and market under emergency use authorization stage one for both of our tests, ELISA and rapid test. Um, we received uh, the uh, European Union approval, uh, the CE mark for both ELISA and rapid test. Um, uh, we received the NVISA for Brazil for our ELISA test. And right now our applications are under review uh, for rapid test for both in Canada and in Brazil. A rapid test usually takes a bit longer than Elisa uh, to, to receive the, 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 the approval and we're going through that right now uh, and everything is in order, we're in communications with them. Uh, but at the same time, we, we secured uh, you know, our, our manufacturing to make sure you know, we have enough capacity and we're still in talk with uh, you know, a few different productions lab in, in US, Canada, and Europe to make sure it will be, we have enough capacity for, for the demand. And also, again, at the same time, in parallel working with distribution partners that, uh, and different associations to, to uh, ex, you know, extend our reach um, uh, on, on for the sales and distribution. And, and we do that. And on the, on, on the telehealth and health tech side of it, um, we're expecting to launch our, our, our health tech uh, component of this by Q1 uh, and and uh, ready to ready to roll uh, with with that product as well. Very exciting! You guys are up to a lot of things. So let's talk a little bit about sales and distribution. Have you secured any contracts yet? 
That's a very good question. So um, as, as I mentioned in earlier, with the, uh, uh, to your earlier questions, uh, sales and distribution was one of our main focuses, but sales and distribution happens in a few different stages. Um, the first thing is when we receive the approval, majority of the large orders, they need to receive the samples and they need to fill the study. And that takes about a week or two weeks. We kind of start the mass productions up and receiving the approvals for any jurisdictions uh, to make sure like, you know, we, uh, we have the guideline for that and IFU and everything else to be based on the guideline of that jurisdictions. So um, we have lined up few distributions in Europe that were, you know, we're in conversations with them and a few has been finalized that, uh, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna announce them uh, with, with some details to the, to the level that we can to the public. Um, and uh, from, from, from the Canadian side, uh, we work with, uh, we, we finalize an agreement with uh, a TM Safety, which is one of the larger distributors for PPE based in Toronto, uh, and we received an order from them. Uh, we also work with a few different uh, associations and we're finalizing the agreement with them. Um, one of them was the Canadian police that we had announcement and we're gonna have more announcement as soon as uh, we uh, basically, uh, we meet their criteria because they're, again, for announcing, they each has their own criteria that we can make an announcement on that. And obviously for Canada is depending on the Health Canada approval, but in Europe right now, because we received that, now we're going through the process of, of ordering and receiving the orders and providing the samples and productions. Um, in Brazil, um, the company has been uh, selected uh, under uh, an accelerator program with the Sao Paulo government that they're going through that. Um, when we finish that and they do the, all the testing up and receiving the visa for rapid tests, then that gives access to, the, to, to more of the healthcare uh, facilities in, in Sao Paulo. And, and again, we're working with a few distributors on that area as well. So uh, to, the short answer to your question is, um, uh, you know, yes, we have secured, uh, you know, few orders and secured few distribution partners, including some in uh, South Asian countries uh, that they're helping us and they're working with us to receive the approval in those jurisdictions as well. Awesome. That's great news. So, you know, we heard you just announced a $4 million private placement. What's the logic behind that? So that's, I'm, I'm glad that you asked that question. Uh, so we announced, uh, you know, a private placement yesterday. And uh, not necessarily because the fund was, uh, you know, needed and the company was in the need of receiving fund. Since four years ago, we have access to the $10 million convertible notes by our CEO. And a company has been operating and uh, also investing uh, in, in different businesses. And within our, even our portfolio companies, by using that 10 million convertible notes. However, um, the decision that we made was a strategy decision that, that uh, you know, to, to do this private placement. There are a few different reasons that we're doing that. Having a 10 million convertible notes from one person uh, is, it, it's gonna help from the funding perspective, but it's not gonna help us with the diversity of investors. Mm -hmm. um, we don't only look at one step or two steps ahead of us. We look at at least five or six steps and see in order for us to get there, what is it that needed to be done right now? One of the things that we feel is needed from the Victory Square perspective is do a proper private placement um, you know, with, uh, you know, with the investment banks and investment channels that not only we can bring a, you know, strategic investors as part of the Victory Square that can help us long term uh, with the you know, future needs of funding we need it when we grow, but also is going to bring more, more eyeballs to our company. We're going to receive the research and, and, uh, and uh, research coverages and analysis coverages by these uh, banks that many of the investors would like to see that and, and get a professional uh, opinion on what is happening and, 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 and see that, that we're getting with that. Also, as part of our plan, you know, we're, we're planning uh, and, and uh, uh, we're planning to, to for uplisting. And in order to do that, again, having a, a diversify uh, investor base on having a proper raise is, is going to help us. Now, obviously, you know, it's got to be having cash and the teal, more cash and the teal is going to benefit all the shareholders on the company because it's going to help us, number one, to, to be able to even like on the Victory Square health side uh, to, to provide funding if needed for, you know, get more tests, increase the production, focus on our, uh, you know, health tech projects, as well as if there is any other good opportunities out there that is needed that, you know, as a company, we can, uh, we can uh, leverage this and, and, and use that. Um, in order for us to get strategic investors in, uh, there is always the entry point is important. So we had to have a, you know, a, a, a good entry points for strategy 
strategic investors to come in and and it's to, to support the company for the future growth. And we studied that based on other cases. You see many of the successful companies today, such as you know, WellHealth or CloudMD, uh, that they're doing a great job in, 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 in uh, what they do with their company. And they always had this. They had proper raises and brought the strategic investors and, and they support them along the way when, when they got there. Now, um, and the, the other part with that is even like when we wanted to find uh, right partners to do their private placement with us, and we did a research and we, you know, we worked with someone that has a very solid record track in health and, and in telehealth. Uh, therefore, they have access to the solid investors uh, that they are interested in in this industry, uh, and that's why we work with them. So, um, basically, looking at all these uh, reasons, we decided to do this because we felt, uh, in a long term, that benefits the company and shareholders and everyone who's been uh, investing and and working with us uh, in in last few years. Awesome. Well, you know, what's next for you guys then after this? So uh, right now, uh, our, because of the pandemic of what's happening, uh, we're focusing on Victory Square Health, obviously increasing our productions, increasing our sales and, and distributions and locking more sales and distribution is, is one thing uh, that we're focusing on. The second part of it is continue getting approval in different jurisdictions so we can expand our network. And I also, as I said, the, the, the telehealth and health tech component of the Victory Square Health that we've been working on it for a long time. Um, uh, we're, we're, um, we're very excited for, for the launch, which is gonna be in Q1. Um, so that's only on the Victory Square Health side of it. Uh, as, as you know, Victory Square Technology has uh, 22 other portfolio companies that they're all working in, in hot sectors, such as AR, VR, gaming, cybersecurity, um, fintech, uh, you know, uh, uh, insurance tech, and um, we're, we're, you know, we're, they are going through um, their, their growth stages, and we have two companies that they're ready to spin out, uh, and I'm working on that as well. So uh, there are so much happening, and uh, again, we're, we're trying to stay focused, set the goal, which is, again, not one step or two step, but it's going to be like five or six steps ahead of us, and go backward to see what is needed from, uh, from us to be done today. And, and move from there. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Fahid. You guys are clearly up to a lot, and I'm excited to continue to update our viewers on your progress. So thank you. I appreciate the time and uh, look forward to, uh, to speaking with you more. Sounds great. We'll talk soon. Thanks. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. That wraps it up. We're out of here. And always remember, Departures Capital is for information, education, and entertainment purposes only. Don't buy or sell a stock because you heard it on here. Buy or sell a stock because you've done your research, you've done your thorough due diligence, and you're making your own personal investment decisions for yourself. This video is not financial advice. We'll see you guys in our next video.